Welcome to Tuesdays at 2. I'm your host, RJ. In this show, we take a new ingredient every week. It's going to be an ingredient you can find at your local supermarket, and we're going to teach you how to make a wonderful recipe with it. So stick around and check out the recipe. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Tuesdays at 2. I'm RJ, your host here. Uh, this is the Swiss Diamond Kitchen. Today, we are working with okra. Guys, if you don't know what we do here, every Tuesday at 2 o'clock, we come and we help you guys create couple recipes with a uh, ingredient that we pick out of a magic bowl. We are using okra today. Uh, it's we pick, what we picked out of the, uh, the bowl, I guess, two weeks ago or last week. Gosh, I don't even know what that is. And we're doing two recipes. One is a classic uh, okra and tomatoes. You would normally serve that over rice or with some crusty bread. I've got some crusty bread for you. Um, and I'm also doing a beef and okra vegetable soup. It's a quick soup. It's going to be done in about 30 minutes, which is, uh, you know, quick for a soup. Like every soup, it's going to be better tomorrow, but serving it today will be great. Um, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take this. I've got some boiling water. I'm going to take the okra for the um, okra and tomatoes and get it boiling. Okay, so just put whole, whole okra right in there. And what we want to do, <clears throat> excuse me, is boil that down until it gets soft. It's going to be boiling for about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and then I'll flash I'll, I'll flash it. Um, in a bowl of ice water. So really all we're going to do is let that sit. They've been washed, um, but they're not pre-cooked or anything. Same with these okra. These have been washed. We're going to do something a little bit different. With okay, so moving over to the next recipe, starting with the soup here. We have a nine and a half inch soup pot. Um, this is our uh, this is our HD nonstick soup pot. So, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to brown off some beef in here. I'm going to show you how it releases without deglazing it. And then I'm going to dive into what we need to do. So I've got a pound of uh, stew beef. All I've done is season it, um, flipped around once, seasoned it, and that's it. So we're going to put that in here. Once this pan gets hot, I'm going to drop a ton of or a ton, a touch of oil in, probably about a tablespoon or a teaspoon. I always use rest of my less than my recipes called for. I don't need a ton of oil. You'll see that these pans don't need a ton of oil, but I prep the recipes in case you're not using Swiss diamond cookware. So if you are not using a really good nonstick, by all means, go ahead and use all that oil. That way you don't get everything stuck to the bottom of your pan. It's a soup. It's going to be delicious. We'll see. Okay. But wait, before we continue, do me a favor. Click that like button. Subscribe to us if you haven't already. Make sure you've hit the bell so you get our notifications. And comment down below. I know you don't like everything I do, so let me hear it. Now, back to the recipe. What we're going to do is we're going to take this beef and just set it down in there. We're just going to kind of sear that off. So we're going to keep this on high and let it cook down for just a minute or two. In fact, I'm going to switch these. There's going to be a little bit of beeping. This is my hotter one, so we got it. So we're going there. This, like I said, we're just setting these okra off to the side. Um, that is a different recipe that we'll get to in a minute, but we need to get those, uh, we need to get the okra boiling so that they can get nice and tender. This recipe, however, since we're putting everything in the soup, um, we won't need to, to pre, we won't need to, uh, to pre-boil, excuse me, we won't need to pre-boil the okra. Gosh. Okay. So what we need to do next while that's boiling is we're going to cut our whole trinity, which is onions, peppers, celery. We're just going to give them a small dice, one of each, one onion, one pepper, uh, well, one of each. And I use two stalks of celery for every one pepper and every one onion now. This is going to add a ton of flavor, a ton of spice. You can use a Holy Trinity spice mix um, if you want to. You'll get the same flavors out of it. It'll be a little bit less time, but you're not going to have the veggie crunch in there. You're not going to have the extra veggie um uh, uh mouthfeel and all that it's up to you we are putting a ton of vegetables in um i'm showing you how to use a mix between fresh and frozen on this one it's again it's a quick simple mid you know midweek soup this one's not going to take all day to cook um and it gets better tomorrow this is one of those ones that you know cook it today uh, you know have it for the rest of the week have a little bit every day um and it'll get better every day actually as those flavors kind of come together. So I'm just slicing up our onions, or these are peppers, sorry. Um, and I'm going to do the same with celery and the onions. Just a medium dice. They don't have to be perfect. They're going to be, as I said, they're going to be in a soup, which means they're going to kind of 
<clears throat> excuse me, all break down a little bit anyway. So we've got celery up next. Again, just a quick dice on these. And last but not least is onions. Same thing, quick dice on this. Guys, if you're doing a lot of vegetables where you're going to have, um, we're going to have some waste, having a little trash bowl right here makes it way easier than trying to find a trash can every time you peel the onion or have to, um, you know, try to get the seeds out of the peppers or whatever. Usually at home, I have two. I have one for um, meats and one for vegetables because I do end up using the compost. Or one for compostables, I guess, and one for not compostables because um, I do end up composting at the house. But if you're just going to throw it in your trash can, you have trash, put it all in the same bowl. Just a tip I picked up actually like 20 years ago on the Food Channel. I don't remember who it was. I was watching and I thought that was a great idea. So here we are. All right, so what we want on that beef is we just want to brown it off. We don't, we're not really looking for any caramelization on it. Um, it's fine if you do, but again, with it being a quick soup, the star of this is not the beef. And you can cube this smaller if you want to. I didn't bother. Um, you know, if you want to cube it smaller and be able to get smaller chunks of the beef in there, by all means, do that. Um, I, I don't know. I like the bigger, the bigger chunks. It really gives it a good feel. What's going to happen is they'll get really soft in there and they'll, be able, they'll start kind of spread over time anyway. All right, so now that I have these split points, what I'm going to do is just go ahead and put the onions and peppers and celery in. I'm going to let those cook, everything cook there until the onions and peppers and celery get, um, get soft. Guys, can you throw me a rag? Oh, this needs garlic as well. Thank you. Can you also, oh no, 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 no. I wasn't gonna use fresh garlic in this one. Because we're doing a quick soup, because I'm showing you how to use frozen stuff, I wanted to also use spices um, instead of fresh on this one. I know that's not normally what I do, but it's what we're doing today. So I'm gonna use a, about a tablespoon of garlic powder in there. Guys, I would normally use two cloves of garlic. If you're using fresh garlic, put two cloves of garlic in there. Minced up right about now is a good time to put them in. So I'm just going to stir this up. Like I said, we're going to cook this over high heat until the vegetables become tender. You can see, I I don't know, can you see this camera or I kick it? I may have kicked it. But you can see that I browned that beef off in there and there's nothing sticking to the bottom of the pan. We don't have anything in there at all. Um, so we're just going to keep that going. So the next step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these okra and I'm going to cut them. So I've already washed them. Um, any fresh vegetable, I say this every time, anytime you have a fresh vegetable, wash it. Onions uh, probably are the exception, but any peppers or, or anything that grows out of the ground, they're going to just be dirty. Um, and you don't know how many people's hands have touched them or anything. So with okra, what we're going to do is we're going to just top or cut that top off. Uh, you can eat it, but it is tougher than the rest of it and takes a lot longer um, to get tender. So I usually don't. Um, they're good fries because you have that little bit more of a crunch in there. So when you're doing fried okra, I don't toss out the cap. Um, but anytime I'm doing it where I'm going to stew them down, they're going to get softened. So anyway, I'm just cutting off the tops and then I'm cutting them into, I don't know, half inch discs, give or take. I've got a pound of okra here, guys. Um, Maybe a little bit more or a little bit less than you'll need for this dish, but it's I don't know, with, with, the, with the amount of meat they're putting in there, it's correct. How's that? The good thing about a vegetable soup is do whatever you want to. If you don't like the vegetables I'm putting in there, um, change them. Put whatever vegetables you like. Uh, you just want to make sure that they you get them all cooked about the same um, tenderness by the end. <clears throat> Excuse me, which is why I have the Holy Trinity in there getting soft before these go in. Um, these will take less time to cook down once they're in the water than the rest of them will. They will take forever to do if you're just kind of trying to sear them, which is why people don't usually do seared um, okra. A good way to do okra is, however, um, 
coat it in olive oil, toss it in olive oil, I guess, and then, <clears throat> excuse me, put it in a sheet pan. Put that sheet pan in the oven at 450 for about 15 minutes. You'll see them start to brown on the edge. It's another really good way to make this. Uh, we don't have an oven here yet, so I was unable to show you guys that. But if you like, and for if you follow down below, click that follow button. Um, we got enough of you guys following. I'm gonna be able to get an oven. That's my next upgrade. I can't wait. Cranked up on high, like I said. We're gonna let that go for another minute or so. What we're gonna do is we are going to take two things of vegetable broth. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is 32 ounce jars or cans or boxes or whatever. Take two of them. Put them in there. Cover that. Let that come to a boil. Once that comes to once that comes to a boil, I'm going to put this okra in. Uh, we'll put in our frozen veggies. We'll put in our tomatoes. Yeah, we put in all the stuff. Pasta goes in the last uh, five minutes. This pasta go, cooks really fast. This is not 12 minute pasta. Teeny little skinny baby shells. Um, they don't take a ton of time. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we are going to drain this okra. Set this lid some more to burn me. Oh yeah, I'm gonna get yelled at. All right, so I just have a thing of ice water here. What I want to do is I want to stop this okra from cooking. You can see that they've kind of lost their bright green color. That's okay. That's what we're going for in this one. They're much more tender than they were. So really, I'm just trying to stop this from cooking down. We're gonna let them cool for just a few minutes to where I can handle them. Um, guys, in this ice water, they are going to cool relatively fast, but be careful, test them. Don't ever burn yourself. You know, if things are too hot, don't use them. I know that I go in a little aggressive when it comes to touching hot stuff. My hands are used to it. It's uh, calluses or whatever. They get built up over time. Don't hurt yourself. It's not worth it. Let it wait another two or three minutes um, and you're going to be just fine. Okay, so I'm going to reserve a cup of this water because you're going to want some later. And just move this pan off of here. All right, so what we're going to do is we've got these cooled down. They don't take a super long time. We're just going to shake them off real fast. You'll see they're a little slimy. That's what okra does. Don't be scared of it. This meal is actually, you want that sliminess. I'm just going to take it. i got some paper towels over here. I'm going to pat them dry. guys this is a classic meal uh tomatoes and okra is a meal that comes from the new orleans area or it's creole based it's been out for i mean it was created hundreds of years ago probably it's the classic way to use up okra to be able to use um you can use oh sorry you can use it as a sauce you can use it as a, a base you can use it as a meal by itself honestly the way i usually serve this is just over some rice with some bread um, today we're just going to serve it with some bread because I didn't have any rice, no big deal. So we're just going to give these a rough chop. Again, you can see that they're soft and tender and mushy and that's what you're going for. Be careful here because they are uh, a little slimy, your knife is not going to slide through them as easily. Um, and your knife's going to want to slide everywhere so just make sure you're holding on to it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Make sure you're forcefully cutting down and not cutting into your hands. Yeah. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to move that. We're going to heat that pan up, which we are currently doing. We are going to use a quarter cup of butter or a quarter cup of baking dripping if you guys have them. I wanted to keep this one vegetarian. We don't do that very often. Obviously, that one is not. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use butter instead of uh, baking drippings. The meal is going to be just as good, just a little. It will be a slight different flavor. You won't have that bacon flavor into it, uh, but you really you won't miss it. Right? 
Yep. Okay. Just making sure my steps here haven't made this one in a while. So next up, we are going to do the same thing. We're going to rough cut an onion and we're going to rough cut a pepper. And we're going to get those going in the butter here in a minute. We'll go ahead and put the butter in and let it start to clear. Guys, our magic bowl is going to be empty soon. So you should comment down below on some ingredients you would like us to cook with. I try to keep it on things I can find in my local grocery store and not go into specialty food stores. But if you post something down there and it is something you're adamant that we need to cook with, either to show you how or to see if we could do better than you or whatever, uh, put it down there. You never know. I'm not against going to a specialty food store and trying some stuff for you guys. All right, so once again, rough cut on the, on the onions here. Go ahead and drop those in. These don't have to go in extremely hot. They will start to cook. So what you can see we're doing here is we are using induction cookware. We do have induction um, for for almost every unit that we have. We have an induction version. So if you have an induction burner at the house, or if you're looking for something for your boat or your RV, um, you know most of those are induction. We got you covered. Everything. Everything that we'll show you today, and like I said, almost everything I ever show you because we are using cooktops, uh, has an induction version. We have the non-induction version as well. If you guys don't know the difference, an induction cooktop uses uh, magnets to create the heat as opposed to fire or um, electric rings. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And it is considered safer because the cooktop itself does not get hot. Now, that's not to say... As you're cooking stuff on there and the heat is being transferred, things obviously are getting hot. But it's safer because if you leave the eye on, um, I don't know how you could because if they're anything like these, they beep all day. Uh, but if you leave the eye on in the house or something, you don't have to worry about your house catching on fire. Um, you know, I, they use them a lot overseas in high-rise condos or high-rise apartments because, you know, they, what they don't want is one house catching on fire and it catching everyone else's house on fire. That's no good. Same thing, if you have a, you know, the worst thing, you would think maybe it wouldn't be the worst thing, but the worst thing um, that can possibly happen on a boat is a fire. You have all the water in the world, but if you have a fire, you're in trouble. You know, that thing will sink on you real fast. Excuse me. So, that's the reason why these came out. I believe they're probably a little bit more energy efficient, although you guys can comment below and let me know if that's true or not. I use gas at the house still, so if you get induction cookware, you can use it on any, any cookware, any range. Um, the cookware can be done on, or the cookware can be used on, again, gas and radiant ring and glass top, as well as induction. But if you don't get the induction-based cookware, uh, then you can't use the induction-based. Other than that, they're the exact same pan. They're all cast aluminum. Um, they all have the same HD nonstick coating on them. Uh, they all have come with the Bakelite handle. If they have a lid, they're all the same lids. Everything's able to go in the oven up to 500 degrees. Again, exact same pan, other than the, the possible magnetic base. If you're thinking about going to induction. All right, so, oh, those aren't soft yet. We're going to let those get a little softer. Getting there, getting there. Okay, so I have the steam lit the steam vent closed. I want to keep all the heat inside. I don't want any steam escaping yet. Uh, once this starts to steam up, actually I'll probably take the lid off, but what you could do is keep the lid on um, and open the steam vent and enough steam is going to get out, get out to create that drier environment on the top of the vent. I think I want it out because I want it to evaporate as quick as possible. I want this thing to come down a little bit. Uh, we're going to reduce that probably by about a third. Um, I know it's a soup and I know that soups are supposed to be wet, but we want all those flavors really coming together. Um, the best thing about a soup is you can condense everything together and if it gets too dry on you, you can always add more water back um, or stock or whatever it is that you're using. Um, so that way you can just keep everything together. My, some of my favorite soups, you reduce almost all the way down to nothing. 
and then you pour water back off on top of them, um, bring them back up to a boil, simmer them for a couple of minutes, uh, and then let them sit overnight, and then you're good the next day. Those are some of my favorite soups, but this one's not that one. You don't have to wait that long. Drip all over your countertop. All right, guys, so these are getting soft. That's what we're going for. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yep, okay. So next up, I'm going to throw in a... This one. I'm going to throw in a 20-ounce can, 28-ounce can of whole tomatoes. Um, with tomatoes, I think I've said it before. I definitely will say it again. With canned tomatoes, guys, get the best ones you can afford. Um, this is what's really going to make everything shine, right? Like this is this is what you're looking for. So we're going to put the tomatoes in. These are whole tomatoes. I'm going to stick my hand in here and squish them up in here. If you don't feel comfortable with that, pour them in a bowl, squish them up. You don't have to break them all the way apart. You just want to you want to take these and just kind of, you know, if I do it above the can, it's getting nasty, but just kind of like that. So I'm just going to stick my hand in and squish them a little bit. Um, you can do it in the pan too, but the pan's hot. This is a little bit safer. Uh, the bowl's probably a little bit cleaner. Everybody's laughing at me. They must not squish their tomatoes in the pan. How do you guys squish your tomatoes? Comment down below. My favorite part of squishing tomatoes is when they explode and they go everywhere and they get you in the face. All right, so we put the tomatoes in there. We are going to put a um, tablespoon of sugar, teaspoon of sugar, sorry. You can use a tablespoon, it'll be a little sweet. Same black pepper. Salt. And we're gonna let that kind of cook down for a few minutes. Perfect. All right, so we've got this going. What we're going to do here, so this is boiling, I'm going to put the okra in. Now, don't get these confused if you're making them both at the same time. These are the fresh, not boiled okra we're going in here. And then, like I told you guys, we're going to use frozen vegetables. Just because I want to show you that you don't always have to go and spend a lot of money or a lot of time if you're going to be cooking. Why not? Why, why? These frozen vegetables are going to turn out just great in this here pot. Ooh, about half of this bag is what we're looking for. Um, I want you to do about a cup of each, give or take, of you know whatever ones you like. This is corn and lima beans and green beans. That's perfect. Those are the ones I wrote the recipe for. However, it can be really any vegetable mix that you like or whatever you have in your freezer. And we're going to stir in a can of crushed tomatoes, or diced tomatoes, I mean. <sighs> okay. Maybe we're going to do that. Here we go. Boom. Same thing. Now we're just going to bring that back up to a boil. And as soon as it starts to boil, we are going to put the pasta in there. Our pot's looking a little full. So I'm going to try to let it boil down just a touch. Just going to stir this all together. So you just want to make sure everything's incorporated. That's the name of the game here. Um, there's a lot of liquid in canned tomatoes. No matter what size or brand or um, type you buy, there's always going to be a lot of liquid in there. So before I put the okra back in and let those all kind of come together, I want to I want to um, 
reduce that down probably by about half. Again, it won't take long. Keep it on boil, keep it on hot, whatever you got, um, and it's gonna be fine. This, I didn't just realize I didn't season this. So we're just gonna season it with some salt and pepper. Let it come back up. So a pro tip is if you are using frozen vegetables in a soup and you really want it to be done quick, Take those frozen vegetables, uh, put them in a colander, run them under warm water, not hot, but warm water in your sink. What that's going to do is it's going to make the temperature of your soup not drop so drastically. So we're at a boil and as you can see now, it's not there anymore. Obviously we put in uh, three cups of frozen, basically ice cubes, <clears throat> excuse me. So it's got to come back up. There's no real reason why you have to warm them up, uh, especially if you're doing a soup like this where it's, it is kind of a quick soup and everything's going to be together. However, if you want to save five minutes, that's a good way to do it because you know we were sitting here around here with nothing to do for a couple minutes and putting it off in your sink with a colander, warming up your vegetables um, and making them not ice cubes when you went in. So when that starts boiling, pour a half box of pasta in. Uh, this recipe is for about four people, um, maybe six. There's a lot of water or liquid in there. We'll see how much it boils down, but I've, there's four persons worth of ingredients in there except for the water. Um, so again, however much, you, soups are super easy. Soups are, the good thing about soups is you just throw a bunch of stuff in a pot, right? You just stir it up and you see if it tastes good. If it doesn't taste good, you put some more seasoning in it until it tastes good. Speaking of, I did not put Italian seasoning in it either. About a tablespoon of seasoning, let that get good and hot. All right, so you can see that our tomato mixture is starting to boil down. Um, we are going to take, I have a teaspoon, tablespoon of all purpose flour. I'm going to take water. I don't need the whole cup. I'm going to start with probably a third of this. What we're looking to do is we want to mix it together and make it a paste. This is going to help thicken up um, thicken up the okra and tomatoes to make it more of you know like a sauce. Alternatively, you can use if you can't use. Um... Thanks for joining us. We had a lot of fun. Do me a favor, click that like button, click the subscribe button. If you haven't hit the bell, make sure you hit that. Comment down below. Stay tuned. Next week, we're going to bring you another great recipe.